All right, let's talk about handles. This is going to be a full, you know, treatment of handles in general. Or again, it's not about handle design so much as it is about um, things that go wrong, I guess, is it's really how we should look at it. And also what to look for in terms of the wood and the grain and stuff like that. Most of the discussion about handles revolves around grain orientation. That seems to be the thing that people are most concerned about. Uh, I would say it's more important to be concerned about the quality of the wood, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but just look past the, the vertical grain thing and just obsessing over the grain orientation because if you have a crappy piece of wood, it really doesn't matter. And if you have an excellent piece of wood, it also doesn't matter that much what the grain orientation is. Um, grain alignment this way, if you're looking at the butt end of the handle, most people prefer grain going in this direction and that's kind of like common wisdom. I don't have a strong opinion on it, but I still favor, I tend to favor grain in this direction, uh, probably influenced by other people and reading stuff, uh, but also by personal experience and seeing axes break. Now I've certainly had axes where the grain was oriented directly this way and other handles and I've used them just fine and they seem great, but I've also had them break and uh, found a lot of broken ones and thought that yeah, that's because the grain is oriented this way. Now there is also a tradition of doing that, I guess, in Scandinavia with, I think it's birch, uh, to have the grain, you know, horizontally oriented. Again, I just don't have that strong of an opinion about it because I only have so much data to go on. But my personal experience has steered me towards uh, vertical grain. And of course, you know, just being influenced by the stuff that I've read over the years and people I've interacted with. But the story does not end there because there's also run out and run out's probably much more important than that. So run out means that, you know, I can have the grain oriented this way or this way, but if the grain doesn't go straight through from here to here, and maybe the grain's running this way. So that means as the handle is cut and carved out, it's cutting across the grain and the grain actually is pointing like this. Now you can't tell that from the end of the stick at all because it just looks like vertical grain. You need to look at the side here. This one's uh, very good, so the grain is, is quite straight this way, if I'm looking on the side. However, this way, this grain runs out slightly, and it, it actually sw it moves around this way a little bit. So this can happen in both directions, right? You can have run out this way, and you can have run out <coughs> this way. So in severe run out, you're going to end up with grain that's crossed like that, and that can definitely form a weak spot. The ideal is that the grain is straight and it runs all the way through from one end to the other. Obviously, if you have a curved handle like this, you're violating that grain and cutting through it a little bit. And the more curved it is, the more you do that. But it's still, you know, it's theoretically ideal to start with a grain that goes all the way through. Actually, it'd be theoretical ideal if you had a curved handle and the grain followed that, but that's like out, pretty much out of the realm of reality. Uh, there's a good example right here of run out. This is the grain, that line right there. So this grain, it starts out pretty straight here, but as you go down the handle, it gets more and more like this. So this was cut out of basically a curved piece of wood. Now this is an ideal, right? Like I said, it goes, it goes like this, it gets worse and worse, and then over here it actually reverses and it straightens back out again. Now that can cause some problems. One is that it's unstable and it can tend to warp and twist more. This was a little bit twisted. I both recarved and I also steamed and straightened it to get it back in order. However, like I said, wood quality is more important than any of that. And this piece of hickory is just really, really tough and really nice. When I bought it, it was all bashed up here and actually broken up here inside the head um, from just abuse and over, you know, hard use, probably just abuse. And uh, they didn't manage to break the handle in this weak area. I've used it a bunch. I didn't manage to break it. And uh, it's just a nice piece of wood. If I'm picking out a new handle, this is not the handle I'm going to pick out with this, this severe run out. You know, I'm definitely not going to pick that handle. But if I were given a choice, and the only choices I had were this run out or a light, pithy feeling piece of hickory, I would definitely go with that one because um, the toughness of the wood is more important. Now that's pretty hard to judge and it's harder to judge when the handle's actually on an axe because you know you have this extra weight. If you're sorting through a pile of handles, you know, feel the weight. Like actually go just pick one up after another. Even if it seems difficult, go with your ins you know, with your intuition or instinct. You just say, yeah, that one feels a little bit lighter, or it look has a certain like kind of uh, pithy or soft look to it, and this other one has a dense hard look to it, then go for that one.
you know, other factors, you have to weigh all these factors together. My point being that all these other defects that I'm talking about and, and am going to talk about can end up being secondary to just the piece of wood itself having a tough character. How that happens, you know, is the shade growing, the tree growing with a little bit more sun? Does it have, you know, better nutrition, more or less water? I don't know. I don't know, you know, how that plays out, but there's, those things obviously have an effect. Aside from run out and, um, you know, grain orientation and all that, there's also um, knots and other wonky weird stuff that goes on. So this handle, for instance, has, you know, numerous knots or areas that were obviously next to a knot that maybe isn't there anymore. There's actually a knot here that's partially fallen out and that affects the strength and also the stability of the wood. So this handle is warped slightly in this direction. It's warped very slightly in this direction as well, and it's got a propeller twist, and it's all because of this section of wood, this eight inches or so of wood, where there were a bunch of knots, and the grain kind of does all kinds of weird, you know, in and out, diving around and stuff, and that just makes the wood unstable. Is it a deal killer? Um, you know, whoever had this before didn't manage to break it. I haven't really used it yet. I just picked it up, and I haven't straightened it or anything like that, but it's not the handle I would pick out again, you know, if possible. But if a uh, handle had a knot, especially down here where there's a lot less stress, if there was a knot here and, you know, I had a choice of this again and a light pithy piece of wood that happened to be straight and have good grain, I'm probably still going to go with this one. Knots are a problem, but if they're down here in the handle portion, it's pretty much not a problem usually except for stability. Typically in hardwoods, uh, it's good to avoid the heartwood of the tree, which is darker. So you see it on uh, hickory sometimes, part or all of the handle will be like a darker wood. That's the heartwood. It tends to be more brittle. I've definitely had a lot of problems with it. But again, other times it doesn't seem to be a problem at all. And what the difference is, I'm really not sure. But it's something that I tend to avoid if possible. Again, you have to weigh it against all these other things. Now, if you get a used handle and it has obviously been used and it's survived so far, well, that's a pretty good sign. And used handles can be fine. It just depends. A lot of them are crooked, like the average used handle is not straight anymore. That's okay. In some cases, you can straighten it. I've straightened lots of them. I straightened this one. I straightened this one. I will straighten this one. I've straightened lots of them. And it's really usually not a big deal but it depends on how the things curve like this one for instance is curved in all the different ways that it could be it's, it has a, a slight propeller twist towards the end here it's warped this way and it's very very slightly warped this way probably not enough to even uh, I'm not sure about that I'm probably not enough to bother with so the easiest one to take out is this you know right here and we'll try to do another video on that. I have a short one already that you can look at, but I want to do another one where we do some different methods and give people like maybe a few more options about how to do it in the field or at home with just, you know, whatever you have around. But anyway, it's not a huge big deal. Propeller is harder to take out because you have to figure out a way to fix this at a certain point, you know, where it starts to propeller, in this case, right, right in here. And then I have to figure out a way to twist this. So I haven't done that very much, but I'm going to work on that too and see if uh, I can figure that problem out. Sometimes they'll warp again over time. Sometimes they'll stay. Here's the problem. Wood is unstable, right? A tree is not this homogenous manufactured thing for our use. You know, it's just a, a wild thing that's growing and the wood will form tensions depending on what's going on in the tree, like knots, is the tree leaning, is there wind consistently in one direction, you know, sun on one side, shade on the other, and stuff like that. So sometimes if you saw, for instance, saw a log or a board out of a big log, you know, the, the big log is kind of not going to warp and bend or anything, but it has these tensions in it. When you cut the board out, all of a sudden, sometimes the board will immediately just spring into a bow it's not being held back, like all this tension is not being held back anymore. Now, you don't just make an axe handle out of that. What you do is you season it, and then you pick the piece of wood, and you say, okay, well, now that this is seasoned, right, it's stable, and you're going to take that board, which, say, is, you know, two inches thick and three or four inches wide, and you put it on the mill and or the lathe, and it turns out your handle. This is like, you know, commercial production. But then you've also taken something this size out of something that was this big trunk and again you've released you know it, it being held back like these natural tensions in it so immediately it can spring out of shape or over weeks or over a year you know over time with changes in temperature and humidity it can just do all kinds of stuff
that's just the reality of using wood and you can't expect it not to do that. Now old axes are almost always abused in some way, like they're left out in the woodshed with you know the sun shining maybe leaned like this with the sun shining on one side and then it gets damp in the winter and then it gets dry in the summer or however that works where you live that's how it works here and eventually the wood just you know those tensions and all these defects and stuff they just the handle just moves around if you're shopping for an axe with a handle you want to look at those things for sure and it's pretty going to be pretty rare that you pick up a used axe it's really you know the typical used axe it's going to have check marks in it and it's not going to be straight. These check marks are okay if they're not super deep. The ones in this are actually fairly deep. They're at the weakest part of the handle, yet the handle's not broken. Now typically they're going to be loose too. This is the only axe I've ever bought used that I can remember where the handle is tight. And this is one of these plum permabond where they put this epoxy in here. I don't know what they did in here to make this the way it is, but this thing is rock solid. I've never seen anything like it. And it's obviously seen some weather. It's uh, checked, so it's seen some, you know, repeated heating and cooling or moisture and drying, yet it's still tight. But that's, you know, the exception. This one was loose. It also had epoxy, by the way. But I was able to jump the head on further, get most of the epoxy out, get the wooden wedge out, and then re-wedge it. So typically, it's going to be loose, and you're probably going to have to Try to get the wedge out and re-wedge it or shim it to take up space. You can drive shims in a single bed axe on this side if it's really loose and there's just no way you're going to get it tight enough. Then you can drive a shim in here. The first thing though you should look at is are you going to be able to jump the head down and get it tight on the bottom because you should really get the bottom completely snug against here. Then you can use re-wedging and shimming or whatever to, to fill in the rest of the space in the eye and tighten it up. But the first thing you want to do is get the bottom seated really well against the shoulder. So most use axes, that's exactly what you're going to end up doing. Is you're going to end up, you know, maybe doing a little whittling and stuff here, jumping the, the head further on, probably trying to get out the wooden wedge and anything else that's in there, re-wedging it, and then doing what you have to do to get the thing tight again. But it's often very doable. So what I'm saying is don't overlook using a used handle. Don't overlook being able to straighten it. What's not okay is if it was sitting down on the damp ground or soaking in water and the inside of the eye has become, uh, you know, attacked by fungus and basically rotted. Most of the time that's going to be a deal killer as far as using, using the handle. Now I haven't really tried uh, gluing handles back together, but I think it, you know, in some cases it may theoretically be possible. If there's some cracking up here by the eye, uh, a real common one is for it to crack by side impact, so if it gets hit really hard here, the handle will crack a little bit off the side. If you can jump the axe head down and seal that and like pinch it back together so that the broken portion is up in the eye and then wrap this, you might get away with for quite a while. That's, that's actually the case with this axe and it's actually pretty stable. Now we're seeing more and more new handles that are milled instead of turned. So these handles are all turned on a lathe and there's a pattern Anyway, whatever, you, you put it on this special lathe and it comes out, you know, this shape. Now, more and more handles are milled out of a, a flat board, so they won't have any uh, swell or thickness this direction. They'll just be flat all the way across. They usually have a flat side, and what they're doing is they're cutting the shape of the handle out of a flat board, and then they mill the edge round to round it off. It's pretty obvious if you know what to look for. And you're not going to, you're going to find that in some used axes now because they're starting to get, uh, you know, onto the used market. But they're still not very common except if you go to the hardware store. They could work. I'm not saying they couldn't work, but it's generally a bad sign. Like if you get an axe with a milled handle, there probably wasn't a lot of attention paid to quality control in the manufacturer of the head either. And obviously, when you get a, a handle to replace a handle on your axe, or if you get, buy a new axe or a used axe or anything, you want the handle to be made symmetrical in the first place. And we talked about the fact that it's gonna, it can move around and probably well over time, but you know you want it to have been made symmetrical in the first place. And that is not always the case. You know, if you're shopping for handles, sometimes the eye is off center, like the oval is off, or it's off to one side. All kinds of things can happen. I got a brand new uh, Snow and Neely axe last year, I think it was. But the handle, say, was straight, but the eye portion, you know, the portion that goes in the eye was milled off center an eighth of an inch. 
So then I have an axe with the center line of the handle like this, and the entire head is shifted over an eighth of an inch. Like that doesn't work, you know, you can't, you can't live with that. So check that out too with symmetry, you know, just really spend time like looking at the handle from, from this end, flip it over, flip it over this way, and look at it both ways that way, and just check the thing out really carefully. If the handle is very thick, then sometimes you can carve around that. But you know, let's say that you get an ax that's already hafted, you know, it's already mounted and the head's okay, say the head's symmetrical, but it's been mounted off center or something, well, you're stuck with that. The only thing you can do is if the handle is thick enough, which they often are these days, you can actually recarve the entire handle to like shift the center line of the handle around to get it where you wanted. And the same can go for twist as well. Remember though, if you get a twisted ax handle, chances are it's gonna to continue to kind of migrate in that direction over time. So that's pretty unpreferable. And one last problem with handles, I recently got this, this little hatchet because I've been kind of looking for a hatchet that I could recommend to people. And something where I could say, well, you know, buy this hatchet and, and do these steps to it. And you can have something that, you know, I personally would consider a good carry hatchet, which this is not, but I thought it might have potential. It's hard to tell until you actually get the thing in your hands. And it's pretty close. The handle's almost as long as I like a handle. It's close enough, but I can't get the handle off to make the modifications I want to make to the head because the wedge is uh, glued in there. So unless I can figure out a way to moisten this or steam it, like instrument makers will do things where they like drill a tiny hole and inject steam in there to try to get the thing apart. You know, I don't think so. This thing looks, seems really glued in there, so that's probably not gonna work, which that means that I have to take the handle off. Like I have to drill it out, destroy the handle, throw it away, make the modifications, and then make a new handle or buy a new handle and put it on. And that was not, the intention of this project at all, so I'm just kind of screwed on that. All right, that's enough about handles. We could go on and on about handles, uh, design, and you know, debate that and stuff, but that's not the point of this video. So let's move on to the next video, which will be taking all this information and all these checklist points and stuff, and what your options are and what you might consider doing to get an act.